Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Here's the headline, and I found it a bit interesting and wanted to dive into it here with you. Nonprofit, so some nonprofit out there, highlights U.S. veteran housing crisis Congress criticized for budget. So that got me to thinking, and I dived, dove, dived, went, whatever, looked into it, and uh, I read a couple sentences and I thought, oh, you know what? I want to share this. So let's let's uh, let's go through it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. Each and every one of you is helping to grow the channel and get the word out to more of us so we're not left in the dark going, wow, I never knew or I wish I would have known. All right, so let's go. Congress, whatever. Congress is feeling the heat after approving the one point two trillion dollar budget in March that includes billions in pet projects like biking trails and walking paths for Congress members in their home states. That's about as far as I got before I decided to come in here and share it with you because it's kind of like one of those no kidding. And here's what happens when bills look to get passed the congressional members in their states with their constituencies wanting to make sure that they get re-elected, uh, well, they're hearing from the local community and it's usually just the people that are the loudest, which guess what? We're really good at not being loud, sadly. I mean, we have the veteran service organizations on the Hill chiming in, but guess what? They're not the voting block, right? The VFW, the American Legion, the uh, DAV, Paralyzed Veterans, uh, Order of the Purple Heart, Marine Corps League, MOA, TREA, the list goes on. All great, all good, all good on the Hill, but the congressional members know that they're, th those aren't the people that are voting for them, right? So we need to be loud in our own constituent kind of districts uh, to make sure that we can get things done. So anyway, Somebody was loud about biking trails and walking paths, right? So here we are. All right, let's move on. Critics are now blasting the earmarks, arguing that lawmakers still have not addressed the crisis to protect Americans, America's veterans and the help they need. And I don't know if this is what they're going to get into, but the VA, the federal government, the VA, has allowed many, many tens of thousands of veterans to be in a foreclosure situation where they should have been in a forbearance situation uh, where they would have been able to add their mortgage payments to the end of their loan. So you had to qualify. So this isn't some sort of free give me. So for folks that did not take advantage of that opportunity, the way that that looked was, hey, COVID was weird, right? We can all agree at least on that. COVID was weird. Companies, some places shut down. Some small small businesses just poof, gone, right? Well, if that's where you worked, now all of a sudden you don't have a job. And places weren't ramping up hiring really during that time frame, unless it was like super skilled working for certain stuff. But the bottom line is you lose your job, now you can't make your mortgage payment. So there was forbearance, uh, COVID forbearance allowed, which allowed you to go, hey, look, I lost my job, can't find a new job right now. You know, I need like a year to, you know, hopefully I'll get a new job, be able to save up some money and be able to get back on track. They said, okay, great. We'll go ahead and do that. You don't have to make a payment for a year and we'll take that 12 months and we'll add it to the end of your loan. Sounds good, sounds good. Where do I sign? Bam, done. Then VA rips that away from tens of thousands of veterans and then all the lenders go, well, guess what? VA said, because it's a VA loan, we can't add it to the end of the loan anymore. So now you owe those eight months that you've missed to bring you current. Otherwise, we're going to foreclose. Meanwhile, biking trails and walking paths are getting approved, right? Now, I know, I know, I just did a video on the 2.5% uh, uh, rate that uh, they're going to be offering to veterans uh, in this uh, circumstance. But... You know, the proof's in the pudding. How many of these folks are really going to get approved into that? How many are not? I don't know yet. And what about all the poor folks that actually went, man, I have no choice now. The only thing I can do is a modification. Do that modification, and now I have a higher interest rate, and now I have to go get a third job to try to make 
life happen. So, oh, those people are up up the creek, right? Because they tried to save themselves and save their house uh, instead of getting kicked down on the on the street, right? So it's a little too little, too late by the VA. Now, for those that are still in the foreclosure, pro this is a great option, and I am happy that they're doing it. But what about everybody else that really got shafted? Well, let's just pretend it didn't happen. That's the wrong answer. We need to do biking trails and walking paths. All right, so let's move on. That was my tangent. So I don't know if they're going to jump into that in this or not. So we'll see. Veterans Village, a nonprofit organization committed to providing safe and affordable housing for America's veterans, has seen the struggle firsthand and is working on helping our veterans have housing. Veterans Village Director Lisa P. I don't know if the P is silent or the F or something. I don't know. P F L A U M E R. Lisa P joined the national desks Jan Jaffcoat to discuss the issue. Well, there's a quotation here. Well, we've been incredibly impactful in Philadelphia. We opened our flagship Veterans Village, the Bernard uh, Spain campus in the Frankfurt section of Philadelphia, she said. We have all of our studio and one bedroom apartments filled with a waiting list. And we do have a few two bedroom and three bedroom apartments available for our military veterans and their families. The organization opened up a 47 unit apartment complex in Philadelphia for veterans who were homeless. So they're focused on, on the homeless issue, which is fine. Uh, but still, the bottom line is, is that there's different avenues of crisis with regarding housing for veterans currently. While, we, while the, uh, the federal budget does include $3 billion to help with housing for veterans, it does not even come close to addressing the number of homeless veterans. We're in a national housing crisis, especially for affordable housing, specifically for vulnerable populations like our military veterans. They're either separating from service or have separated from service and struggle to find a permanent, safe, respectable, and affordable uh, housing situation which is the cornerstone and the foundation for them to be able to have a fulfilling, safe, and sustainable life. Moving on, uh, well, maybe that's the end. I'm looking, I'll give you my two cents here. Yeah, I don't know, that looks like the end. It's just a bunch of comedy things. So, uh, sure, this is focused on homeless veterans, which is fine. Uh, the, the bottom line is, and I like the headline because it is saying that essentially uh, there is a U.S. veterans housing crisis and it's more at this point in time than homeless. It's homeless. It's at risk of becoming homeless, which includes all of those folks that were uh, currently in foreclosure. And now, sadly, uh, because of the VA's rug pull, uh, that actually is putting more veterans at risk uh, than ever before, not to mention just popped in my mind. Think about all those pension payments that um, the VA is trying to call back and uh, and make veterans call back because they had overpaid veterans. Now, I get it. There's arguments about, hey, you should have know, knew that you were getting paid too much or whatever. Look, I'm not here to say who's right, who's wrong. Even if you're wrong, it should have been caught. And even if you weren't wrong, then that sucks, right? So the bottom line is, is that that pulling money back from a very vulnerable pop population, which is uh, veterans receiving pension, is a very slippery slope because pension payments are really reserved for uh, high risk situations. I mean, you were talking about low and no income veterans receiving VA pension. And in some cases you have spouses, surviving spouses receiving VA pension as a safety net program that allows uh, for, for low and no income uh, veterans and, and uh, surviving spouses. And to pull that money back is gonna put them in a more risky situation and could potentially cause them to go homeless as well. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.